Hello, Romanisti and fans of Italian football. I am Wayne. It's nice to talk to you tonight or this morning, depending on where you're coming in from. Today's going to be a cool episode, shorter, much more condensed and to the point rather than the uh, live streams, which, you know, we've had over 50 people in, a bunch of comments, those go on forever. But today we're going to be heading into Roma Frosinone, looking at the statistics, the starting formation, what has Brian Cristante been up to? It's been quite a lot. And then looking at the Mourinho post presser after the match, what the boss had to say. Was he feeling happy? Is he still a little bit upset? Is it back to work? Is it just, you know, is everything okay? I think that's what the fans want to know. Are things going to straighten out? Are they going to level out? I'm getting worried right now also that the SPQR shirts are no longer for sale on the club website. Why? Because Riyadh Airlines will be the new shirt sponsor of the club it looks like at this point i'm sure when i wake up tomorrow morning that will become official so let's break into it let's get to the good stuff guys uh i was happy with the way that roma came out against frosinone look can i say i'm like you know overjoyed am i thrilled that roma won and beat frosinone no it was it was the mission so it's mission accomplished it's satisfaction for then for that day now, in a couple of days' time, there's another game. There's Europa League coming up next Sunday. There's another game, and it's going to have to be this step-by-step -step process. But I want to take a look at uh, just, you know, the ins and outs of this game here. 11 shots, five of those on targets for, for Roma, uh, just under the majority of possession, which is typical. We know that Roma typically doesn't carry possession. Seven corners. So Roma did well when they did have possession. They were able to get, I don't want to say numbers forward, but the chemistry and the balance looked so much more developed between Dybala and Lukaku. So just back to that idea, though, about satisfaction versus happiness. I think that Roma needed to work hard. And Mourinho even said that in the pre-presser, the only way you get over these tough times is to work. There's... If you want to get lucky, you got to be. If what, what's the line? If you want to get lucky, you got to be standing in the middle of the road in order to get hit by hit by the truck. That seems a little graphic, but anyway, the point is that luck is what you make of your situation. If you go out there and you're always going for it, good things are going to happen. If you keep your head high, you keep positive. Eventually, you're going to get out of that situation. And I'm hoping that Frosinone was a turning point. So much of Roma's performances are going to be based on the personnel and squad that Mourinho is able to pick at that point in time. Look, you can get any manager in the world, but there's <laughs> there's definitely a major difference between having Renato Sanchez and Dybala and not. And I'm not saying that it's just down to players. Surely so much of it is tactics as well. But there's something to be said for that. Chris Smalling another major absentee over the years. We look statistically, Roma don't win as much as when he's not on the pitch. Cristante has to drop back in emergency position. We'll get to that. But as we look up the uh, lineups too, it was rumored that this was going to be a 4-3-3, but it actually goes back to a typical Mourinho 3-4-2-1, um, even a 3-5-2 uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, Mancini Cristante indica the interesting here thing here, of course, is that Cristante drops out of midfield and becomes the center back with Endika getting the start due to injuries. Rick Karsdorp gets the start, a rare one for, you could say, the past nine months. Eduardo Bove, uh, Leandro Paredes, Spinazzola gets the start over Zalewski. And then up top, it's Dybala Lukaku with Pellegrini playing a bit deeper, more as a true center midfielder, more as an eight in this situation. Uh, interesting player here is Sule, number 18, owned by Juventus. Marquitza, of course, Baez, and they did have chances. Eusebio Di Francesco coached a good match. He got his players up in the right times. They dropped back and collapsed really well defensively. So I think that Di Francesco is a manager who's going to be on the up. A bit of redemption after his free fall post-Roma. But now I think by next season, he'll be in a mid-table club at the least, if not even maybe one that fights for the conference leagues, like right around there between ninth to seventh place type of team. I could see Di Francesco take over. So let's focus on 
the good. But before we do that, I think it should be acknowledged. I need to see more from Paredes. I want to see why Roma signed him. He has to go out and prove it instead of just being a body, which is which is a lot of the gist of what I'm getting from Paredes at the moment. I want to see that type of form, that uh, you know, that skill. I want to I want to see that he's a quality player, and I'm not seeing it totally yet. I was proud of the way that Mancini played this match. I thought it was a bit more calm than we've seen. Like his nerves have settled just a little bit. But as we look at these players here, Karstorp, Dybala, Bove, Lukaku, Cristante, these are the top five players of the match for me. So Karstorp, he goes out to a standing ovation from the home crowd. Another sellout, the 37th sellout at the Stadio Olimpico in a row. Proves a point. Says, Mourinho, I want to be your number one. I want to be that guy. That's the type of mentality you want from your players, my friends. That's it. And I think he is going to get the start in the next game, the next Serie A match, you know, with the rotation. You don't know what's going to happen with the Europa League. Dybala, excellent. That slightest of touches, so delicate, like a chef's souffle. So beautiful as he put that onto Lukaku. But then there was still a lot of work to be done. So before I get to Big Rom, he gets the second he, or I should say he's involved in the second goal too, Dybala, as he puts that great ball into Pellegrini, and the captain does a good job, slots that home. He needed that goal. But overall, solid and technical, uh, I don't want to use the word quality again, but impressive performance from Dybala, different team when he's there, of course. Doesn't have to be said at this point. But Lukaku had so much to do with that ball when he received it. His balance for a big man, his ability to make space for himself, to see the slightest of angles and get that shot off and score the goal, unlocks it. Great stuff from Lukaku. Bove, eh, like a sick dog, right? That's what they call him. And he was. He's always looking to progress the game forward. Uh, he was good at receiving, or I should say, um, recoveries and breaking up play when he could and initiating I, I don't want to call them deep counters, but repossessing the ball in the middle of the pitch, which is vital and uh, definitely plays a part in the overall way that the team works when you get that ball up quick and it's surprising. Things can happen very quickly. So I was impressed. I don't, maybe not impressed, but I was. it was the type of performance that I knew he was capable of, Eddie Bove. So I'm looking forward to seeing him get more starts. Cristante. I've got some good stuff for you on Brian. Let's take a look at these stats here that I have got on my Twitter. And these are just unbelievable. Hasn't missed a match since December 1st, 2021. <laughs> He's the only player to play every single minute of the Serie A season thus far for the club. 720 total minutes between Europe and Serie A. And there's only two other players who match that in Serie A. One is, I think, Felipe Ender. I, don't, I forget. It doesn't matter. Last year, he was Mourinho's most used player, over 4,300 minutes. <laughs> He's been used as emergency coverage at center back by Fonseca. So this isn't – Mourinho's not the only manager to notice what type of player he's got here. The shame is that – you lose that offensive contribution that Cristante has been giving Roma. And we see him given a bit more liberty up the pitch, and it's really benefited his play. At times, we've critiqued Cristante for his zonal positioning. I have, at least. I know Roma things on Twitter has. And as somebody who plays as an eight, it bothers me a lot. I love playing the regista role more, more so than a, a typical number eight, I guess. But I notice it all the time. But that's because he didn't grow up playing that type of game. It's hard to be mentally on. You're you're mentally drained at the end of those games when you play that six or eight or let's just call it a double pivot, right? And you're marking all that space, making sure no one comes through. So take nothing away from Brian. He does more than his job. He does. He's got a lot of duty. He's got a lot of responsibilities for this team. Uh, at center back, Roma have conceded just three goals out of six matches, with two of those coming against the best team in the league, Inter Milan. And he has convinced four coaches between club and national teams to see him as a leader. His managers continuously say 
that he they wish they had 10 other Chris Dantes to start on the pitch. And among the most 30 most used players for the Giallorossi with 236 matches under his belt. And with this contract, he could surpass Candela, Vincent Candela, the uh, story left back that helped Roma win their last Scudetto. And I said he's a true dire wolf. Why dire wolf? Because I'm rewatching Game of Thrones. And it's the only thing I can think about right now. And these numbers came courtesy of uh, Francesco Balzani, who is a reporter from Lego and does some stuff for info as well. And uh, yeah, you can see it in the comments here. Needs to go back to playing attacking mid from now on. Underrated, my goat, Roma's Frank Lampard. Uh, credit where it's due. Hope for Roma's sake, sake, it has not been jinxed now. What a progress he's had. And nowadays, he's number one in Roma. So you can see the love going around on my page as well right now. Another thing I wanted to mention and ask you, so if you haven't done so far, throw a comment in there, throw a like, and especially to this question here, I want to know, do you prefer the Lupetto on its own or in a circle? For me, I like it in the circle. It just has that vintage look, so a little bit more for it. Piero Graton, by the way, on Urban Pitch, um, hopefully tomorrow or not the next day, I'm going to have a story released about Roma's top 10 kits ever. We're going to go over it on here too. I'm really excited for that one to come out. So that is in the pipeline. But let's get to the juice. Let's get to the good stuff here. Mourinho spoke to da, Dazen, Dazon. I always mess that one up. I think it's Dazon. And the reporter says there was the impression of seeing last year's Roma again. Did you also get that impression? And Mourinho responds, we conceded two opportunities in the first half. The defensive line played with a midfielder and a new guy. Good work by the wingers from a defensive point of view. Great effort from Bove and Paredes. Dybala and Lukaku gave us a hand. The team was a team. And I always like it when it's like that. Frosinone from Serie B has nothing. They are an excellent team, very well organized. I like it when I analyzed it and liked it today. Okay. Do you want to put on your headset and interact with the studio? He says, I'm tired and I have to travel. Love that line. Four goals in five games for Lukaku and Pellegrini even returned to scoring. He says, I thought it would be responsible. I thought I would be responsible. I'm sorry. If Lukaku didn't score. At the very least, no one can accuse me of this now. Romelu scores here, in Manchester, at Inter, and wherever he goes. He is he, and luckily, I don't know how to destroy his qualities. <laughs> what is bothering you so much these days? And the reporter asks this because you can see it in Mourinho's face the past month. He hasn't looked happy. He doesn't look like he's been enjoying himself, right? That's no secret. He says, three months ago, I was loved. Everyone was panicking if I left. Three months later... We had a horrible but multifactorial start. He's saying that our bad start was due to um, a number of reasons. I knew the boys would show what we are as friends and as a team. I'm very happy that they won the match. When you lose a match like the one in Genoa, it's not easy. You need to be balanced, have the mental structure to enter the field. We have never heard any cheering from our fans. We got here today and it was the same thing. Some kids could hear the boos. I think he means guys, like some of the players. Uh, Ragazzi doesn't always translate properly. Uh, hear the boost. But for the fans, it seems like we had one in Genoa. Nice. You were on the pitch after the match, Genoa, and today during the warm-up. He says, but not after the match. I let them enjoy their victory, just the way I am. I have always been the port of safety for these people in difficult times. In the easy ones, I step aside. The Friedkins in the stands, are you happy? Keep talking about the future. I don't have to do it. My future is the contract with Roma that I have until June 30th. The contract is serious for me. Okay. Do you feel the ownership close to you? I don't feel it, and I don't even have to say it. Ownership is ownership. The coach must respect that. They want to win matches and are disappointed by the bad result in Genoa, and today they will obviously be happy with the three points. I work for them and the Roma supporters. When do you plan to get your defenders back? I was watching Juve, and when Bremer got hurt and Allegri put Rugani on, I thought he was lucky. Llorente and Smalling won't be there on Thursday. It's a miracle to have them in Cagliari. I don't want to be too optimistic. Renato would also be useful with Brian on defense. We have to wait and fight like we did today. What are, What is going to happen on Thursday? I don't know. So that was to the zone, and this is actually from the press conference. A couple questions here. 
what has Mourinho missed in this period? What was your response? He says, we were able to control ourselves emotionally without panic. In the second half, we looked for the second goal, controlling. Then the match ended. It wasn't the day to play a wonderful match for physical and mental freshness. It was impossible against a very, very good opponent. I analyzed it before the match, and I really liked it. Even during the match, you could feel the quality. Congrats to them and their city for coming here. What's going on with Ndika? I saw him scared. Interesting the reporter would say something like that. Seems kind of out of line to say I saw him afraid. He said he's good with the ball. Without it, he still needs to know the defensive dynamics. It takes time. Beyond Romelu, who is a very high player who knows everything. The one who is ahead from a tactical point of view is Renato. As we've seen, others need work, time, and positive results. It's been a tough two days, and I'm very happy. So I thought that was also interesting how he mentioned he could even look towards Sanchez to play in defense. Dybala played 90 minutes three times in a row. He won't play on Thursday, the boss says. He's reached the limit. If we don't win this match, I don't know. The Coliseum explodes or there's an attack on St. Peter's. It was a match with these limits. I wouldn't have let him play if he had told me that he couldn't do it. He told me the opposite. I told him that now I'll decide. He absolutely won't play on Thursday. And Renato Sanchez and Smalling after the break. Is Roma going to get them back? He says, before the break, it was a definite, definitive no for Sanchez. For Smalling and Cagliari, maybe a miracle. A bench that can help us, like Rugani, who comes on for the last 10 minutes in place of Bremer. If he could do it in Cagliari, it would be perfect. Otherwise, after the break. And that, my friends, is our Mourinho press conference. Let me know what you think of it. If you agree with the boss, disagree with certain things that he says. If you are happy with Roma's tactical performance, if you're satisfied, if you're like, no, things haven't changed at all, bring me Antonio Conte. I want to hear from you. We're going to end there. We will be back for the um, preview ahead of Roma's match in the Europa League, which the Giallo Rossi should win. But, you know, when you look at these injuries and how they're going to set up, it's anything can happen, my friends. I hope you enjoyed Champions League coverage today, as well as Jude, uh, Jude Bellingham's incredible solo goal. Seems like he can do everything under the sun. Football just seems so easy for him. Uh, that strike from Valverde almost busted the net. I saw who is a Bleacher Report says that they hope the ball is okay. I watched that one with my wife in real time. Felt a little bad for the keeper. Uh, Medet hit off his head. I was like, oh, I hope he's not hurt. Anyway, enjoy. We will talk soon. Ciao, guys.